Let's see what we need to do to create a light setup that will give us rotation of assets and rotation of lights and also give us possibility to change different HDRs to achieve different light rigs like sunny, overcast, cloudy and interior and exterior so what we have here is subnet that has a light dome rough spheres rough color chart and the ground this is our objects that we want to render this is visibility of the light in the render so we also have exterior and interior and this actually just changes the folder where we hold our hdrs this also changes the folder for uh, uh, 2K, 4K and 8K. We have some offsets for assets if you want to have a different starting position for the asset. And we also have offset for a light rig. And we have here a starting position of animation and also how many frames the animation will go in rotation. And we have a separate asset rotation and light rotation. This means that if we don't have this enabled and we jump to the next frame we will just load another hdr if we are enabling asset rotation and it's 25 frames we will have uh, 25 frames uh, rotation of the asset and then the next frame would be another hdr and then 25 frames rotation of asset under that hdr and then the next hdr and so on from the list of hdr and if we say enable light rotation then we will have asset Set rotation first 25 frames and then it would be rotation of light and after 50 frames we will have another hdr the same would be if the asset rotation is turned off it would be just rotation of the light and after 25 frames we will have uh, another hdr we also have uh, here control of uh, ground so the ground we can change the size depending how big our asset is to cover the shadows also the height of the projection because we are projecting here the hdr image we also extracted the data from the upper dome how much upper dome would cast a light on the geometry using uh, a white ground so we would render the white ground let me just show you that so we would render for that specific hdr the white ground and we will average the value of this and then we will use this value to divide HDR width so we extract the light information from the texture HDR texture on the ground and we get uh, correct albedo values for the ground we don't double the light information that comes there let's go now and see how this is actually constructed so what we have here we have here left and right side and that is exterior and interior we also have here uh, ref spheres so what we have inside is just a simple geometry we have a sphere one gray sphere chrome sphere color chart and then we have materials here those materials are quite simple for the color chart we are loading our uh, accg color texture from color science academy we are using uh, simple standard surface gear we are setting a particular roughness that we think that is on chart and ior and we have a uh, gray sphere here with albedo 19 and with a specific roughness and ior and we also have a chrome and the chrome also has a specific ior metalness to one and how reflective this uh, chrome ball is is extracted from uh, chrome spheres from uh, studio sets and we have here some uh, transformation that is scaling this uh, spheres to be smaller so the next what we have here is uh, transformations uh, that we have for the offset and also rotating uh, assets and rotating a light rig and all that is done with the scripts we have a python script that drives the rotation depending on the settings that we have on top of our subnet so here inside the light rig what we have on top here is a list of our hdrs and here we have uh, energy for every of those hdrs individually we measure the energy that comes from the top dome and we are supplying here because that is used 
later in uh, in a shader and here we have a offset rotation for every individual hdr something that we uh, want to have all of them can be zero or whatever you think it's good and also we have some adjustments in exposure for every hdr so that's the list of uh, data that is used to drive the light that is inside we also have here possibility to change the resolution and the index here is also driven by expression uh, depending on uh, what is selected on a parent top subnet and that index drives what data would be extracted from these lists here the path is constructed looking 2k resolution is it exterior or interior and also the energy color from the list here and rotation offset and exposure so basically this is just extracted data using index from this list that is driving the light inside so light gets uh, here that path and also it takes here the exposure we also have here a grid that's our grid and we also have here material for that grid the material is applied here uh, here is a white setup and this is just a camera that looks directly to that when we render and later extract the data looking this setup inside we have uh, that white material is just a simple uh, surface uh, where the specular is zero and uh, diffuse is set to one so we are measuring diffuse reflectance and here is our uh, projection so this is a projection here where we manipulate the uv space s and t for our texture node and this texture node takes the hdr image from the top level and this one divides texture information with the energy that we want to extract from so we are taking this extracted data from the white ground we are observing that as a light information and we are dividing the hdr that already has that light information in it and uh, extracting that here how we did this so what we have here we have a position that we are reading uh, from the ground it's uh, every point on the geometry we are using a extra node add to to control the height of uh, projection so we have that height control here on the top level this one that is a multiplier to what we have in the shader here it's a multiplier to this value so if i put here uh, zero i'm making my projection being on the same level as a uh, spherical projection as a uh, as a grid so as i put this one to minus one i'm making that higher and higher and three was looking fine and uh, the top level here is just a multiplier to to that value if it's two then that value is minus zero uh, six and if it's lower it just goes closer and closer to the center how we are doing this so we have here uh, that extra control that we want to add to the position but we are calculating here vector length of every point on that uh, surface we are taking every x y z values and multiplying with each other so they are squared and then we are separating them because we need to add them all together so it's uh, x y z all of them squared and then add together and then square root that's how we calculate the vector length the distance of every point from zero and then uh, we are using max value here and setting this to something really low like 0001 just because we don't want to divide with zero uh, the vector that comes from here so we are taking every point uh, here measuring the distance of that point from zero and then we are dividing that distance with that point very important then we are taking those values result of those values and we are separating them to z and x are going into arcus tangens 2 and then we also have here a p and we are adding that p twice and then we are dividing arcus tangens with uh, with 2p we are getting the s 
us on the end and this is just a position from where the pattern will go i will show you that later here we are setting p and dividing uh, we are taking here the y position that is again controlled here by this value so we are taking that y position inverting to minus and then here we are doing uh, arcus cosinus of that and then we are dividing this arcus cosinus with a 1p and then that's our tt in a coordinate we are basically if i show you here we are just creating a pattern uh, that looks like this warping the uv space for this uh, particular texture that is uh, hdr spherical so that's how you could create the spherical projection that works under xpu and cpu here on the bottom we just again creating another pattern will just give us opacity on the edges to just present a little bit better our render it's controlled by ramp and the pattern is cr created by uh, having here position control uh, that value is just separated here nothing special and here we have a uv coordinates that this grid has and we are separating those coordinates into s and t as here also is s and t so we are just uh, subtracting uh, those coordinates with minus minus five and this one also minus five so all that gets shifted and then it's squared both of them and added together and then we are multiplying that with three and putting that into the t of our rump and that's how we created this pattern here you can literally control where that will go this is how we are creating uh, our projection that goes directly from the hdr and have a little bit of opacity on the side so when we render the light that all gets uh, connected nicely like that just for uh, sake of the presentation like that you had those quite easy and nice way to to do the rendering another thing that we also have here here is uh, uh, enable custom light what that means that means that uh, you have possibility to uh, create a list of lights that you would like to have uh, it doesn't need to be uh, the same order as it is here so and a number so you can have just uh, maybe uh, these two lights and then uh, exterior uh, will have uh, yeah, this one and then after 50 frames the another one that's our tool that we will use to do all the tests and you saw this previously in the previous lessons to render our character and evaluate uh, the shader what is important here here to mention is that every light will give you a different specular response that you need to evaluate is the character too shiny or it's too bright or it's too dark so i will have uh, my character i will render the character and then i will just like quickly go through all the hdrs and see how he looks maybe rotate from the other side to see how that reacts on the light or maybe some green hill side and so on. 